So we have a fairly big trade to talk about today. Justin Turner, he just signed with a brand new team. MLB The Show 24 just revealed that Vladimir Guerrero Jr. is going to be on the cover of 24. And we know that there's only one more football game in the way of baseball being back. I can't wait. I just feel like this is going to be a great year for baseball. And if you agree, make sure you guys click that subscribe button because we talk baseball every single day. So before we talk about the trade between the Twins and the Mariners, yes, the Mariners made yet another trade. Let's talk about the fact that the Blue Jays, at first I thought it said the Boston Red Sox because I saw a B, but the Blue Jays have signed Justin Turner to a one-year contract worth $13 million. Now, I don't know if this means that Justin Turner is going to be the Brandon Belt replacement because Brandon Belt, he is a free agent. But if they go with the little Brandon Belt, Justin Turner platoon at first base or DH, that's sick. Even though Justin Turner is 39 years old, he still rakes. And I'm not being hyperbolic or dramatic. Justin Turner literally had one of the greatest 38-year-old seasons in the history of Major League Baseball. Would you believe me if I said 38-year-old Justin Turner had 31 doubles, 23 home runs, 96 RBIs, and a near 115 OPS plus? He can still get on base with some of the best players in baseball. It kind of blows my mind that since 2014, Justin Turner has has a combined one 31 OPS plus. I don't know how he was able to do it because what usually happens if you're a hitter in professional baseball, you get worse as you age. Justin Turner, as draft deck Mark would say, he is aging like fine wine. Now, don't hold me to this lineup because this is just a projection from fan graphs, but right now on paper, they have Justin Turner as the DH right behind the cover boy himself, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Then it goes Kevin Vigio, the rookie sensation from last year, David Schneider, Dalton Varsho, who I hope bounces back as well offensively. I'll Alejandro Kirk and Kevin Kiermeyer. Maybe this is a hot take as well, a super random take, but I would still go Danny Jansen over Alejandro Kirk. The question for the 2024 Toronto Blue Jays, can some of their biggest stars bounce back? Because guys like Vladdy Jr., Alejandro Kirk, and Dalton Varsho, they didn't perform the best offensively, and if they can get back to that with that pitching staff, led by Kevin Gosman, Barrios looked way better in 2023, Chris Bassett is Chris Bassett, and who knows, what if Alec Manoa bounces back as well? I still like the Blue Jays on paper, and with just a turn as a leader in that clubhouse, maybe they get better. But to me, this all but closes the door on Matt Chapman coming back to the Blue Jays. And if you're a Blue Jays fan, you might not even be upset over that because he was good at first and then he really just fell off. So let's talk about this trade between the Mariners and the Twins. The Mariners are trying desperately to find a starting second baseman that is not completely terrible, aka Colton Wong and Adam Frazier. Now, after they left the Mariners, they somehow figured out how to play baseball again. But the Mariners are now trying their hand at Jorge Polanco and as a Guardians fan thank you so much we don't have to worry about him hitting 300 with an almost 900 OPS in progressive field anymore he's gone but the full trade Jorge Polanco is going to the Mariners in exchange for four guys Justin Topa who was an old rookie he's 32 years old but he was a rookie last year we have Anthony DeSclafani or Fani I don't remember how to say his last name Gabriel Gonzalez who is a big time prospect for the Mariners and then Darren Bowen who I did not know about until today but let's break it down right now obviously the biggest catch in this trade is Jorge Polanco, a switch hitting middle infielder who has had some pretty insane offensive seasons. Back in 2017, he had 30 doubles, 13 home runs, and 13 stolen bases, but the OPS plus wasn't there. But then we fast forward to 2019, his lone all-star season. He had 40 doubles, 22 home runs, and a whopping 121 OPS plus. And since 2021, over the last three seasons combined, despite the fact that he did play injured last year, he has combined for a 120 OPS plus over the last three seasons. So the Mariners, they're trying to buy his track record and just hope and pray that he's even average in 2024. Because the other guys that they've tried to rely on, Colton Wong, Adam Frazier, those experiments... They ended so poorly. Like, honestly, I'm just being nice. Poorly was an understatement. They were all-time bad. And if you take a look at the potential lineup on opening day for the Mariners, if you can go J.P. Crawford, J-Rod, Jorge Polanco, Mitch Garver, Cal Raleigh, Ty Franz, Luke Rayleigh, Mitch Hanniger, and Josh Rojas, I still think I would go with Jorge Polanco at second base. I'd probably go with Dominic Canzone in the outfield somehow. I would try and make that happen because I do believe that he has a pretty high ceiling. But Josh Rojas... To me, he would be the odd man out. I don't know how exactly you could construct it, but I would want Canzone in this lineup before Josh Rojas. But putting in Jorge Polanco in this lineup, 
This is a beefy lineup. All right, let's see who the Minnesota Twins got in return. They are getting a 32-year-old rookie, Justin Topa, who was one of the better relief pitchers in baseball last year, at least in terms of the AL. He turned in a 2.61 ERA and an eight strikeouts per nine, which was way up than his previous high of 4.9 when he had seven innings in 2022. So it's not very fair. But yeah, Justin Topa, a rookie from 2023 with a 2.61 ERA. He is going to the Minnesota Twins to add to that bullpen depth and they they desperately need that. They also picked up 33-year-old going on 34-year-old Anthony DeSclefani. Now, last year, he started off 2023 on fire, and then he faded as the season progressed. He had 79 strikeouts and 99 innings, so it's not like he is a strikeout machine, despite the highlights that you're seeing. He had a near five ERA. He had a near four and a half FIP, so for right now, he's just going to be considered either an opener or a long reliever. Gabriel Gonzalez is a 20-year-old prospect, and Mariners fans are not happy that they just lost this guy, but he is going to Minnesota. Last Last year in the minors, he had a 216 batting average as soon as he got called up to high A, but in low A, he was insane. A 350 batting average with nine home runs and eight stolen bases in 73 games. So that equates to a 530 slugging and a 933 OPS. This guy, he's got a really high ceiling. He just has to put it all together in high A and then double A and eventually triple A, but he's nice. The fourth and final player going from the Mariners to the Twins. I tried my best to find you guys some clips, but there's barely anything on six foot three righty, Darren Bowen. Last year in single A with the Mariners, he had a 3.8 year A and a pretty respectable 9.5 strikeouts per nine. He does have a slight walk issue. He had a walk issue in college as well. So if they can fix that with the Twins, they've developed pitchers pretty well down there. Now, maybe I'm just a hater because I'm a Guardians fan, but I do not think that the Twins are better going into the next season. They lost Sonny Gray. They lost Kenta Maeda. I know they've added some other guys in that rotation. Maybe the Sheriff, Chris Paddock, the fact that he was throwing 97 to 99 last year. Maybe he's a new ace for them. Joe Ryan, he's going to step up. I just don't think that on paper, the Twins are better, despite the fact that now Edward Julian is going to get more playing time. Maybe they get a breakout season from another guy like Matt Walner and Byron Buxton is back and healthy. I just don't believe that their additions have balanced out their losses. But again, maybe I'm just a hater. I feel like the AL Central right now is completely up for grabs between the Tigers, the Royals are better, the Twins are the Twins, the Guardians are the Guardians, and then there's the White Sox. They have no chance. But that is the full trade in a nutshell. Jorge Polanco, he's going to try and fix the the woes, let's just call it that, that Mariners second basemen have bestowed upon Mariners fans over the last few years. And in exchange for Polanco, the Twins are getting Justin Topa and Anthony DiSclefani for some pitching depth. They're hoping that Gabriel Gonzalez can be a future star and then Darren Bowen, kind of the same thing. He's going to be a project, but they seem like they have some high ceilings.